What's up YouTube fam? Today I got an awesome little project for you guys that you can do at home. It's literally going to cost you under $10. It's going to help you with all of your little hobby DIY projects that require painting and such. And uh, when I did it and it works fantastic and I can't wait to do it and show you guys how to make it yourself. Today at the London Mech Shop Garage whatever we are going to make your own home made sandblasting Chingma Digger. Yeah, so let's get right into it. Cue the music! All right, YouTube fam. So this was what came up. Obviously, I do a lot of projects here at the shop, garage, whatever, and often very very often everything that i touch needs to be refinished repainted redone polished whatever you want and uh, i always take my things out to get professionally sandblasted and you know over time that can definitely create a little bit of financial hardship but um for all the little intricate stuff and i don't mean heavy projects but uh, little intricates little pieces i think this way is going to be absolutely a big money saver for you guys uh, i'm going to show you how just under 10 bucks you can make this thing plug it onto your compressor at your house and get to sandblasting we'll even test on a couple pieces to see the validity of it even wasting your time and um, then I'm gonna take you right now we're gonna load up in the truck we're gonna drive down to our Harbor Freight Superstore here uh, in Santa Maria and I will show you exactly which one you need and um, so yeah let's go Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah. Black aluminum oxide, 70 grit blast media. This is extremely concentrated. Right now, boys, this is not high tech thinking here uh, you need to get yourself a drill that is the same uh, diameter and you want it the same you don't want to go a little bit smaller I guess you can go a little bit smaller it's gonna be a little bit bigger better than a little bit bigger but uh, use a mic find out um, you know what is the closest size to the tube here and what you want to do is drill right through focus you're gonna to wanna to drill right through the top of the bottle, through both sides, just like that. I think you guys are starting to see it here. And then, put the tip of the air gun, uh, let me off camera installation real quick. But yeah, like that, it comes through, like that. And then, what you gotta do is cut yourself a little flute. Let me get this chinger to, to stare at it here. Come on. So I used, uh, for this, I used just a regular hacksaw, a steel blade hacksaw, and I was able to uh, just cut a notch. Now I know that you can play with this a little bit to get uh, different sizes of media to flow through it. But, um, see if I get this thing to focus. So you guys get the point without without us really getting focus here. Yeah. Maybe if I get this down, I'll really give it a backdrop. There we go. So that's essentially what you guys want. Uh, just some sort of feed on here. Um, one thing I would recommend that I didn't do, I didn't think about was putting this notch just a little further back. Uh, so when you slide the bottle on, um, mine, you know, I can't slide it all the way back on the blow nozzle, so I have to make sure that it's centered right over. I think you guys can see under the little feed tube. And um, so I'll show you guys how this thing works. I think you'll be just as surprised as I am. Now, what are we going to be using for media? I'm glad you guys asked. Luckily for us here on the coast of California, here we are in no shortage of fine sand. So, um, we're just gonna simply scoop some of this up. I 
like that. I'm gonna actually use my hand here and get, get dirty. Uh, I'm sure you can strain this to get probably a lot better results as far as like, uh, so it doesn't clog. I haven't had the issue with clogging yet, though I'm sure it can and will happen at some point. But if you got yourself a little uh, kitchen flower strainer that you're not gonna make your mom mad if you use it or your wife mad, you know, go ahead and grab that. Otherwise you'll have to go and find yourself a strainer at the Walmarts or something like that, the Home Depots. So we'll put our cap back on and we'll go test it. Okay, so what we have here is my cylinder for the 87KX500 that we're doing. And uh, so what I'm gonna show you is just by um, kind of keeping the nozzle pretty close to your, to your workpiece, um, we can actually get this thing pretty clean. Obviously we got lots of uh, grime on here, the aluminum stained just from many years of neglect but uh, we'll get this thing looking real clean real fast. Engage your safety squints. So you wanna rotate the bottle up, feeding the media to the hopper here, and go, go. regular air with no sand just flip the bottle down and flip it back up when you're ready So you can see where the abrasives were getting it, where it missed. And, um, you know, I tried tackling some under parts in here, but then something kind of dawned on me. So yeah, that got me thinking. I think that sand that I'm using is super fine. So let's go try a different sand. So I got thinking to myself, I need something a little bit more coarse than the sand in my backyard. So I thought, playground sand. Looking at this stuff, it is quite a bit more coarse than the stuff I have in the back. So I'm gonna fill up my bucket. Ooh, yeah, still in sand. And let's go try that. Now that we got a bunch of this thicker sand, I am going to actually open up this uh, feed hole just a little bit and see what happens kind of tune this thing in.
So you might be saying to yourself, okay, London MX, that did okay on the cylinder. It was a pretty fine blast media. So now with this playground sand, show me something serious that makes me want to make this tool. So we got our beach, or not beach sand, playground sand loaded up in there. It's a lot more coarse. Let's see what it does on rust. Load her up. It's a little bit uh, cumbersome finding that, but easy enough. So it does rust. What about dirty old engine cases? Lastly, I have um, some angle iron here. It's actually from a bed frame, so it's both rusted and it's coated and some corrosion resistant stuff. As you can see, I already hit it, but I ran out of sand. We'll try again.
plugged again. YouTube fam so I hope that helped you and if it did help you help me click that thumbs up button subscribe if you like what you see I'm always doing different projects here in the shop garage whatever it's mostly about dirt bikes but if you're just catching me for the first time welcome anyways um, I'm kind of surprised actually this stuff is is very hard uh, to get off like I tried it with a wire brush and it was extremely difficult with the wire brush. So there is some validity to this little sandblaster thing. So again, I'll put it up here. You know, it got all that. I'm sure you guys know what it's like on, on those bed rails, on the bed frames. Um, it's like a, a urethane, uh, you know, weather resistant coating so the bed frames don't rust. And uh, I often use the angle iron from for different projects. And uh, that's what this was. And it got it down to the bare metal pretty quick, pretty easy. Now, full disclosure, obviously, this isn't some pro level, you know, uh, professional sandblaster because obviously that would have done the job in a whole lot faster. So, but for your little do it yourself or someone that's maybe just doing little detail stuff uh things like hubs um you know small small pieces this totally makes sense it has a lot of validity and besides it's 10 bucks or, or less and i mean how can you really go wrong uh obviously you can play with impacted glass beads um that you can get from harbor freight it, that's probably a little bit more abrasive you can try some walnut shell the the fine walnut shell uh you could try lots of different medias in it and see what works best for you obviously you got to toy around with the uh your output pressure on your compressor but other than that it just you just got to kind of get it dialed in uh, but anyways uh, I think I'm running 100 psi output on mine and I know that that nozzle is not putting out 100 psi um, so you know if you have a lower grade psi or lower grade uh, air compressor I don't think it's really gonna make that big of a difference other than you probably should have a bigger tank on it so it's not constantly cycling but anyways, guys, uh, that is going to close it for today. Make sure you check out one of these videos, and I appreciate every single one of you. Love you, and I'll talk to you soon. Peace out, guys.